we speak now in strange new terms of harnessing the cosmic energy of spaceships to the moon, of ultimate conflict between a united human race and the sinister force of some other planetary galaxy. That was Douglas MacArthur, the American five-star general at the tail end of his power. Best known for his leadership in the World War II Pacific Theater, he oversaw Allied occupation of Japan and later commanded UN troops in the Korean War. MacArthur was removed in 1951 because he contradicted, publicly, then-President Harry Truman. But that didn't stop his interest in the UFO phenomenon, though the truth, now 70 years later, has all but been forgotten. So just what did America's top general think about unidentified flying objects? And why did he believe mankind would have to eventually unite against a sinister force, as he put it? We're a new channel covering declassified files. Subscribe to join us. The audio you heard comes from a little known speech in 51. 11 years later, an 82-year-old MacArthur echoed a similar warning in his more widely known Duty, Honor, Country address to cadets at West Point. We speak in strange terms of harnessing the cosmic energy, of creating unheard synthetic materials to supplement or even replace our old standard basics to expand life into the hundred of years of spaceships to the moon, of ultimate conflict between a united human race and the sinister forces of some other planetary galaxy. The entire speech was delivered from memory, but contained a similar passage. This time, he pluralized sinister forces. The passage, really, is out of place in the rest of the speech. Getting this message out seemed important to him. And there's more evidence MacArthur, once the most popular military leader among the American public, thought about UFOs often. In 1955, he met with the mayor of Naples for nearly an hour, who was quoted the next day in the press. He believes countries on Earth will have to unite to survive and make a common front against attack by people from other planets. The politics of the future will be interplanetary, he said. But where did he get these ideas? Journalist John Keel, citing sources inside the government, speculated about this 14 years after the general's death. He discussed a theory that MacArthur became concerned about UFOs in World War II. Sometimes called Foo Fighters, the phenomenon was reported in the Indian and South Pacific Oceans. Such as in 1941, when the SS Pulaski, a merchant ship transporting British troops, reported a strange globe glowing with greenish light, about half the size of the moon. Or in 1942, when a formation of unidentified objects was observed by U.S. Marines on the island of Tulagi. Sergeant Stephen Brickner reported a formation of over 150 silvery objects. They flew directly overhead he and his men one morning. Instead of the Japanese plane's usual V formation, these were in straight lines of 10 to 12. I couldn't seem to make out wings or tails. They seemed to wobble slightly, and every time they wobbled, they would shimmer brightly from the sun. Their color was like highly polished silver, he said. His sources told him the general established a small group of intelligence officers to collect and study UFO reports in the region. This was somewhat corroborated by R.V. Jones, a British intelligence officer. Jones admitted MacArthur sent the RAF a telegram requesting details of an unidentified rocket crash near London in 1946, during his time as Japan's military governor. 
It's in this time frame that we also have an interesting, still controversial connection to the Roswell, New Mexico UFO incident too. In 1997, U.S. Army Colonel Philip Corso claimed in his book, The Day After Roswell, that he was involved in a secret government program to distribute debris to private defense contractors. Corso alleged the artifacts were used to reverse engineer extraterrestrial spacecraft that crashed near Roswell 50 years earlier. He also suggested, rather intensely, that the world was secretly at war with beings who piloted the craft. Stanton Friedman put it best when he said the book didn't attempt to verify any of its claims with documentation, and was vague in explaining just how the technology was delivered to companies to reverse engineer. But military records do confirm Corso's service, and they also show he was intelligence chief of special projects Far East Command under Douglas MacArthur. So, if Corso really was exposed to Roswell's extraterrestrial origin in 1947, this information could have made its way to the general. And it may explain why he began talking about sinister forces outside of our galaxy throughout the next decade. Of course, it's speculation. The inner workings of how MacArthur came to learn about UFOs may never be known. But the fact remains, he did discuss them throughout his final years. A person close to MacArthur told Keel that after he retired, he collected books and magazines on UFOs and would talk to anyone who would listen about a threat from outer space. In 1958, MacArthur was reportedly a speaker at a brainstorming session between scientists and military officers familiar with the topic. Attendees said the general believed an extraterrestrial military force was scouting our planet in preparation for an invasion. He believed militaries of the world should be developing a planet-wide defense to combat these invaders. As of now, we cannot verify this meeting beyond the anonymous sources speaking to Keel. But the general continued to talk about the threat in his final 1962 speech you heard earlier. We also found a curious reference to the speech in a literal newsletter from the U.S. Air Force Space Command, the precursor to the U.S. Space Force. The then commander of Space Command ends the newsletter with the general's quote. We deal now, not with things of this world alone, but with the illimitable distances and as yet unfathomed mysteries of the universe. We are reaching out for a new and boundless frontier. Could the true purpose of Space Force be what MacArthur envisioned in the 50s? As preparation, in case the UFO phenomenon is a scouting party? Or was he just paranoid and speculating? And could this fear of an extraterrestrial threat be an excuse to militarize space today? This remains a huge debate, but MacArthur's place in it is largely forgotten. That's why we made this video. At the very least, his words need to be included in the history of early ufology. He was in a position to collect UFO reports and clearly expressed interest in gathering them around the time of Roswell. We can't tell just how in the know he was, so it's difficult to determine if his belief of a scout force is an opinion or a real explanation of the phenomenon. What do you think? Do MacArthur's views sway your opinion on UFOs? Let us know in the comments. And special thank you to our Patreon supporters, including Reese T. Without you guys, this would not be possible. If you like what we do, please consider supporting our production of one episode a week on Patreon. It's about the cost of a cup of coffee each month. It really helps us continue to do this. Thanks again, and see you next time.